My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with a Flash Letter Jam app and a series on YouTube tagged 120 Days Jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served breakfast. Hello, you are welcome to episode number 39 of the 120 Days to Jam Physics with Flash Isaac. In this episode, we shall continue from where we stopped in the previous episode. We shall be doing some unfinished business under vapor. Remember in the previous episode, we analyzed that matter exists in three major forms and they are the solid, the liquid and the gaseous state or you can say vapor. Because once a liquid is evaporating, so that um, gaseous state of that liquid is referred to as vapor. So long the liquid state exists alongside the gaseous state. And all this must happen at a temperature below the critical temperature. The critical temperature is 374 degrees Celsius. So any temperature above that or above, a vapor cannot be able to liquefy anymore. It can't change to liquid anymore so long that temperature is reached or it is exceeded. And this is the pressure temperature graph of triple point. Triple point is the point at which matter exists together as solid, as liquid, and vapor or gaseous state. This is the point. For water, I said it is around 0 0.01 degrees Celsius or 273.16 Kelvin. If I give you an ice block, that ice block can be melting, which means liquid is present. At the same time, you see water vapor, vapor coming out, or gaseous state of water coming out of it. So that three states can actually coexist. So that point where water or liquid rather can or where matter can exist in these three states is referred to as the triple point. So this is the graph for triple point. And in the previous episode as well, I talked about both saturated and unsaturated vapor. I said for saturated vapor, the amount of molecules leaving the surface of the liquid is the same thing as the amount of molecules coming back because the air is already saturated. It already has the moisture it needs. Meanwhile, for unsaturated vapor, the amount of molecules leaving are more than the ones coming back because we need more molecules to saturate the air. Also, the saturated vapor is in equilibrium with its own liquid. Meanwhile, the unsaturated vapor is not in equilibrium with the liquid. The saturated vapor is in dynamic equilibrium with its own liquid. Meanwhile, unsaturated is not. In physics, when we speak of equilibrium, or in my videos on equilibrium of forces, I said that for there to be equilibrium, the forces coming from the right should be the same as the forces coming from the left. In that case, there is balance. The forces coming down should be the same as the forces going up. They will be balanced. For me to be standing here without sinking, it means that there is a force, normal reaction, which is equal to my weight. So there is balance. Similarly, in dynamic equilibrium for vapors, small liquid is formed at the top of the body. That is one. This is examination points. Just take note of them. Two, in dynamic equilibrium or dynamic equilibrium exists in an open space rather than a closed space or vacuum. For there to be dynamic equilibrium, there should be an open space rather than vacuum. Don't worry, at the end you'll see what dynamic equilibrium actually is or the simpler form that you can understand. And the vacuum already occupying top of the tube disappears. So at dynamic equilibrium, the vacuum that is already occupying the top of the tube, it vanishes. And four, 
Dynamic equilibrium is the rate at which evaporation and condensation are exactly equal to each other. If you are boiling, this is liquid and this is vapor. So evaporation is taking place. Now, if the rate at which water vapors are leaving the surface or gaseous state is leaving the surface, is the rate at which these vapor or gases are condensing, changing to liquid and coming back to the system, then that is equilibrium. And I told you that boiling or boiling point is the temperature at which the saturated vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. And there are factors that affect boiling point. The factors affecting boiling point are pressure and impurities. When you add impurities to a liquid, the boiling point increases. Which means impurities increases boiling point. Why? Those particles in the liquid, they try to stabilize that liquid phase. On the other hand, impurities reduces melting point. So the presence of impurities will increase boiling point, but they will reduce melting point. This is why in uh, areas where you see ice, ice block and everywhere, very cold region, frozen region, when you add salt or impurities, those ice will melt easily because that impurities have been able to reduce the melting point. But when you add impurities to liquid, it will take more time to boil. Similarly, increasing pressure will increase boiling point. The higher the pressure, the higher the boiling point. This is why uh, food cook faster when you use pressure cooker. Look at the concept of pressure cooker. When you are boiling, like the higher you go, the lower the pressure in altitudes. But look at it. If you are cooking in your house, you notice that water will boil at 100 degrees Celsius. After that 100 degrees Celsius, what happens? The more you apply heat, the liquid state of water will be evaporating. So instead of this water boiling, and heating the food you are cooking in, more of the water is being converted to gas or to vapor. But a situation where you increase pressure, as you are increasing pressure, this boiling point of water will be more than 100 degrees Celsius. So, when water gets to 100 degrees Celsius, instead of evaporating and escaping, it will still be heating. It will be getting hotter and hotter and hotter. So, the part of the water that would have escaped as vapor remains to increase the temperature of what you are cooking. So that is the concept of pressure cooker. Pressure cooker makes food cook faster because at higher pre pressure, the boiling point of water increases. So the water is able to get hotter and hotter and hotter and heat the food instead of starting to evaporate at 100 degrees Celsius. So this evaporation will change to heat in the liquid to increase the temperature of that food. I do hope you actually understand what I am saying. Another concept you should understand when it comes to vapors is evaporation. Evaporation is simply change of liquid to gases at the surface. Evaporation is a surface phenomenon. It does not happen all over the liquid, but only at the surface. This is why evaporation can occur in any temperature. Cold, hot, evaporation can always happen. But boiling is not a surface phenomenon. Boiling happens all over the liquid. Now, evaporation depends on wind, humidity, area, temperature, density, and pressure. These are factors that affect evaporation. Wind, humidity, temperature, density, and pressure. Now, this is the relationship. Evaporation is proportional to what? over pp this is to make it easier for you to understand or cram or unload the factors that affect evaporation w is wind h is humidity a is area t is temperature so what all over rho density and p pressure then there is a concept referred to as condensation 
when the gaseous state of matter changes to liquid, from gas to liquid, that is condensation. Now, the examples of condensation are or applications or the results of condensation around us are dew, mist, frost, fog, cloud, rain, and hailstones. Dew, mist, frost, fog, cloud, rain, and hailstones. All these are examples of condensation taking place around us. The only factors or the only factor that affects saturated vapor pressure is temperature. But it is not a linear relationship. It is non-linear relationship. But generally, as temperature increases, the saturated vapor pressure should increase. Because these vapors, they also have pressure in them, generated as a result of this uh, vaporization. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a concept which is referred to as the amount of water vapor present in the air. That is what we refer to as relative or humidity. Humidity or relative humidity. Humidity itself is a phenomenon which refers to as the amount of water vapor that is present in the air or that is present in the atmosphere. In the next episode, we shall deal with relative humidity in details for you to understand what this guy is all about. So after uh, humidity and relative humidity and their applications, we shall go straight to revision, questions and answers under vapors and one or two jam standard questions. Then you must get the flash linux jam app to practice. Play store, app stores, windows and the rest. Just visit flashlinux.com. You see all the versions of the flash linux application. It will help you to see further questions and to know that all those things I've been explaining, they are enough for you to solve as many questions as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, see you in the next episode.